Hey everybody, I'm Aaron Johannes, and he's Eric Name. We are here at the Beamer Harris Bradley Center. The Bucks just wrapped up their game against the Denver Nuggets. The last game of November, and they finished 7-11. and um, Now they're going to head into December, and things are certainly uh, going to get tougher for the Bucks as December rolls around. But when we look at November, 7-11, and it was kind of, a, kind of an okay start for them, but then yeah. um, they went on that losing streak, and they just snapped a three-game losing streak again. Um, but the Bucks overall, I think the main story that everybody is talking about, it's pretty obvious, it's pretty clear, is their defense because their defense has been really, really bad. And, look, I think if anybody thought that their defense would – I think we all expected a drop-off, but if anybody would have expected a drop-off to the fact that they'd be the worst defense in the NBA, I think you're lying um, because I think we all expected them to not be the same, but nobody expected them to be where they are now. And I guess the biggest question that we wanted to talk about first is, I guess, where do they go from here? They have another month. It's just the first month of the season. It's over. But where do the Bucks go from here? And what necessarily can they do um, to get better on the defensive side of the ball? Because, look, they have a brutal schedule um, in December. If you haven't checked the schedule all out, the schedule out for December. It's rough. It's, it's extremely rough. And there are, like, there, long story short, there are two winnable games that they have. And that's against the Lakers and against the 76ers. Um, but they, the, but listen to this. They play the Spurs um, Wednesday. They're at Detroit. The Knicks, the Blazers, the Clippers, the Raptors, the Warriors, um, the Lakers, like I mentioned, the Clippers, <laughs> the Warriors again, at Phoenix, Philadelphia, and eh, who cares about Philadelphia, <laughs> um, Toronto, Dallas, OKC, and Indiana. That is a, uh, an extremely tough schedule for this team. And there's a very good chance this team could very much be well below 500 um, by the end of December. So I guess to kind of go back to my original question was, Eric, where do you think um, they go defensively? We're not going to expect a big jump, but what kind of steps it, can they make on the defensive side of the ball to kind of get things back up and not be anywhere near the bottom as far as um, defense? Well, you just have to think about, obviously, you have these great offenses, so it's going to be a struggle. There's no way around it. You have great offenses. So really, the, the thing I'm looking for is for them to react and handle adversity at all. Because right now, they're just not doing it. Anytime something starts to go wrong, it just kind of rolls on from there and snowballs, and it gets worse and worse. The body language starts to get bad. Guys start to quit a little bit defensively. That's a concern. That's a, it's a huge concern, and it's not necessarily something we saw last year where a team would just hit a tough shot. They'd be okay. They'd handle it. They'd talk through it. But this year it hasn't been that way. And for me, that's, that's a huge concern. And I think right off the bat when you think about, when you think about the communication of overcoming adversity, Look, we're going to hear their names thousands of times. You probably already have heard it a thousand times. You're going to hear it again. Jerry Dudley and Zaza Pachulia. If you don't know those names, man, you better get them tattooed on you. Um, but boom, right there. And for me, I think it's just right off the bat, just the communication aspect of it. Um, you just look at the game against Charlotte where Batum hit that three late um, to pretty much seal the deal. Um, Middleton and Bayless got confused on that switch and Batum just got wide open and then right after it there was frustration between them and it's just like that's that like that right there like that communication right there that has to be fixed because Batum is already a guy that's already going to shoot the three you know who he can make the shot and with a game that close to have something like that it's just like th those are simple things you can just clean up and to me it's like it I don't know if that'll necessarily make a huge difference but baby steps to kind of get better defensively that's the main thing because look this is this is like this is a death schedule right here <laughs> yeah, it's rough. this this is yeah. a rough schedule for them and I, I didn't look up their combined records but if I did it would only make it even worse because this is a really tough schedule for them and look at the same time for me it's about communication it's about guys talking it's about who's going to be the vocal guy I think everybody knows Jerry Dudley was the vocal leader for them last year but vocally, like we still, we still aren't kind of really sure who that is. Like I think, yeah, we've seen it from Henson here and there. We've seen it sometimes from Monroe, um, sometimes maybe from Middleton. But we really haven't seen like the veter the, the veteran guys like Jared Bayless and OJ Mayo um, being the vocal guys. And I'm not trying to call them out or anything, no. but it's just like we haven't. They, they're not known to be big vocal guys. No. Um, but at the end of the day, OJ and Jared, they're leaders. But we haven't seen them necessarily been as vocal compared to like Jared or Zaza. 
And, and it's tough to have that. And I think one thing that I've been talking about this entire season is that it's always process, not results. Everyone is always concerned about the results. It looks bad. They're giving up all these points. Sure, that's all fine. But if inside there you're doing things right, that can be huge. And, and that's what people should be focused on because it's going to be rough in December. The schedule's brutal. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be bad. But if you start to see improvement in that process, you're starting to see a good thing. And that's what the focus should be. It should always be about that process and not the results. So for Bucks fans, could be rough in December, but if you try to see the good things and the improvements that they're making that might be small and maybe they're still getting beat by a lot, but at the same time, if they're making those improvements, that's what you want to see. Like a grain of salt, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, so look, we have December. We have the schedule coming up. I think the biggest question that we're going to start to wonder, and it's gonna be, we're going to wonder this right. We're wondering it right now, so it's definitely going to be something we're thinking about in December. Um, what happens to Mike and Carter Williams in the starting lineup? And we don't know... I mean, he obviously was benched um, against the Hornets, played 16 minutes, and then tonight he had a triple-double, and he responded well for him. He played really well, I think, um, especially in that second half, obviously, it was where he scored most of his points. Um, but he played pretty well, and um, that's kind of going to be the theme, is, like, what happens. Now, the other thing, too, is Gravis Vasquez hasn't played the last two games. Yeah. And so I, I wrote about this in the preview, is when Gravis comes back, what happens? Is Gravis is the one that's starting, and then Bayless is to the two, and OJ off the bench. So... This is kind of the the question is, what happens to MCW in the starting lineup? I think it's presumed that this isn't permanent. That's for sure. That's yeah. 100% um, not going to happen. And the same with Jabari, too. Um, but at what time do we expect to see them back into the starting lineup both together? Because this isn't going to happen for long. Yeah, I think you look at the lineup, and there's a ton of lineup questions. Uh, how are minutes distribu distributed? You've seen Kid do a lot of different things, which he always does. He did that last year, too. He tinkers a lot with lineups, but it's been the same this year. So what happens with lineups? When does Jabari get off a minutes restriction? I didn't think there was one, but when we asked about it tonight, Kid said that there was a minute restriction, that they're looking to keep him in 20 to 25, which I thought we were done with, kind of. Or at least that was the way I took it. I hadn't heard about a minute's restriction in a long time. So when does Jabari finally get released, let's say? I, I'm not sure what the... Get the training wheels. Yeah, but at some point it's got to happen, but I have no idea when that is. And it's kind of the same thing with MCW. When is he going to get more minutes? Is it going to take two performances like he had tonight? Is it going to take three? Is just tonight going to be good enough to get him in the starting lineup? I have no idea, and I don't think anyone does. So keeping that, keep an eye on that's going to be interesting. And then obviously everything we've kind of talked about at Brew Hoop already this year with all the different lineups they do, offensive identity, are they posting up a lot? Are, is When Grievous comes back, is it more pick and rolls? How does this all work out? So I think there's a lot of interesting questions there, and December is going to be an interesting month. Well, it is, and of course, everything that's going to happen in December, uh, the game previews, the recaps, the videos, all of that is going to be right here at brewhood.com, guys. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.